Good rather walks in the room now. Everybody says, all rise. You do? Any routine? Routine. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Are we on? We're on air? Okay. Welcome to the Trade, Commerce, and Tourism Committee. It's Wednesday, April Fool's Day. Let's not have any no. April Fool's today. Uh, I'm Councilmember Hahn. I'm chairing this committee, and I'm joined by Councilmember Labonge. Good morning. Have not heard uh, of the ETA for Councilmember Rosendahl? No. No. Okay. Uh, if it's okay with you, I would like to uh, continue six and seven until our next agenda. There were clerical errors in the Harbor Department's transmittals. So we'll wait until we receive the corrected ones. Okay. okay. And then. Do you know that? They were I think they do. Okay. And then uh, we're going to continue uh, take on uh, consent item five, if that's okay with you. Sure. And then, our, uh, since we are uh, you're pressed for time, I thought we would take uh, item eight, which is the appeal um, first. Very well. That's a big item, and there's a lot of people here. Okay. And if you'd like to speak and address this uh, committee, make sure you fill out a card and give. And I just ask a question only because we did it. I welcome all public comment. I know you're the chair, but if if people do one minute public comment, but they need more, they take it. Only because there's a lot of people here. That's a thought. Because okay. I, I do have to run down at 9:25. That's a thought. Do we okay. take the co comments first, or wait to hear the report? Okay. And well, whatever you want. Let's hear the item. Okay, so let's take item eight. Under item eight, the Coalition for a Safe Environment submits for council approval an appeal to the Board of Harbor Commissioners certification of the final subsequent environmental impact report for the Pacific LA Marine Terminal Project and the Board's approval of the project. The Coalition contends that the subsequent EIR does not comply with the California Environmental Quality Act based on 11 principal allegations. The Harbor Department has submitted a report to the Council in response to the Coalition's appeal. Thank you very much. Uh, this is actually a very interesting um, item. I believe it's the first time uh, we've actually heard an appeal uh, of an EIR. Um, it's, a, it's a new process, so when uh, someone appeals uh, the decision uh, of an EIR it actually comes to the City Council and actually the last time we had close to hearing appeal and we actually the appellants dropped the appeal uh, before it came to the City Council so this is actually a new process instituted I think a few years ago so uh, we've never done this before don't really have a standards on on which to kind of go through this process but uh, I think this is a very important uh, one that we're going to hear today, so I'm sure the city attorney will um, explain the process to us. Okay, Chris, do you want to come on up? And um, and Ralph, are you going to come up? What what I thought we would first um, do is uh, maybe let's describe um, the. Uh, why don't we describe the project? Why don't we describe the project? Um, talk about uh, you know uh, what the project is, what the environmental impacts are, uh, how it's being mitigated, um, and then we're going to um, maybe ask uh, Chris to explain this process of, of this appeal. Um, did you want the appeals process first or second? Yeah. Why don't we? Yeah. Why don't we have the? Why don't we have the process first? What What are we doing here? What are we hearing? Okay. Uh, why is this new and different? Good morning, Chris Bobo, Assistant City Attorney. The uh, appeal process that you're considering today is under the California Environmental Quality Act. Under the Act, any time an environmental document, such as this Supplemental Environmental Impact Report, is certified by a non-elected lead agency. 
the law provides that there must be an appeal to the elected city body that oversees that elected that non-elected agency in this instance the non-elected agency is the board of harbor commissioners uh, what the act requires is that the full city council can hold a public hearing on the uh, environmental impact report just as the board of harbor commissioners did under the council rules the committee has the authority to consider the matter in advance of the council hearing and to make recommendations to the city council one of which should be that the full city council hold a uh, public hearing on the matter uh, so at this stage you are reviewing the entire EIR the administrative record the submittals of the uh, appellant and the uh, Harbor Department uh, you're considering the issues raised in the appeal the evidence that the Harbor Department considered in uh, making its certification of the document and deciding whether to recommend to City Council that they deny the appeal which would be in effect affirming the decision of the Board of Harbor Commissioners or grant the appeal which would be overturning the uh, decision of the Board of Harbor Commissioners if you overturn that decision the environmental document would be sent back to the Board of Harbor Commissioners for its reconsideration and when you say that uh, we have to hold a full public hearing at City Council basically that means we would just need to uh, take public comment well it has we, to be we, we would reopen the public correct normally when a, when a, a ordinary uh, council matter is before it it can refer the matter to a committee for a public hearing in this instance the law requires that the full city council hold the public hearing so this committee proceeding is a would provide a recommendation or be advisory to the full city council besides uh, either uh, accepting or denying this appeal uh, are there uh, areas where we could make recommendations to yes you can you can things. make recommendations to the Board of Harbor Commissioners if that is your uh, desire based on a review of the evidence however because the city charter grants the full authority and control of the of the Harbor Department to the Board of Harbor Commissioners uh, it has authority to expend money and it would have to decide what would be an appropriate expenditure or mitigation measures or project okay any questions of our no I just don't want to ask one question if I do leave the room for 15 minutes is that uh, challenge this hearing uh, there would be a loss Mr. of Rosen. a quorum at that time okay, since so Mr. I won't Mr. leave the room at all Mr. Time. Rosendahl shows up because everybody's here but I'll okay. send my fine deputy to represent me who's in the audience thank you thank you okay um, why don't we uh, describe the project okay um, I provided in front of you uh, I'm Ralph Appy I'm the director of environmental management well, let me just ask one question and then uh, and then uh, I, you know we're gonna go through each uh, item of the appeal and um, at that point uh, is there a port response to each item is that gonna be you Ralph yeah, it could be a little bit of a team effort. Okay. Predominantly me. Okay. And obviously, you have that in the written report from the from the Harbor Department. Right. right. I would I would probably try to I'll try to summarize uh, as, as quickly as I can. If I happen to pass over something of importance, just slow me down. Okay. Um, I did provide in front of you a um, a, a little present some presentation materials that goes over this uh, the document the the first uh, slide there on the bottom. Um, and by the way, I do have additional copies if uh, people would like those. Anybody for the public who would like a copy, there's a copy out here for you. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, it's been a pretty lengthy process, this CEQA process. We actually started with a notice of preparation in June of, uh, of 2004. And uh, between that time and now, uh, we put together a document that's probably over 15,000 pages. And uh, and we've done lots of public meetings uh, with the with the community. We've there's a list there of meetings we've had, even in addition to the meetings, the normal CEQA meetings that we have, public meetings. So there's been a lot of public input in into this document. And then finally, on November 20th, the board uh, certified and approved the project. Uh, during this time, we did meet uh, with the appellant group. That's pertinent because it's the appellant group 
uh, a member of the appellant group on the Trey Pack appeal, uh, uh, which is part of our community trust fund agreement that actually appealed this, this uh, EIR, and they were present at some of those meetings uh, that we met with them. On the second page, if you look at it, is a little brief description of the project. Um, the key features are it's, a, it's a, the, the process here is a 30-year lease, which will come to the board at some future time. Uh, there's going to be 4 million barrels of capacity, so it's going to bring crude oil in from various places uh, around the world. Um, it's going to come into a place called Berth 408. It's on Pier 400, and this berth was actually made for this use. There's a major channel that was uh, dredged to minus 85 feet that goes out three miles, actually. And so this project was actually built for this purpose, this, this uh, Pier 400 at this site. Uh, once the crude reaches there on these very large crude carriers and it's offloaded, the crude is, goes, uh, there's electric pumps right offshore, and it pumps it into surge tanks and then tanks on Terminal Island. I can tell you have a question. No. No, okay, sorry. Um, there's, so there's two tank farm sites. There's one on Pier 400 and one larger one on Terminal Island. And then uh, uh, you can see on this diagram the blue and green lines are the pipeline connections that take it to a distribution that would take that crude oil to refineries. Um, an important part of this project uh, that's, that is pertinent here is that uh, the project does not, uh, it, it's designed to fulfill a need of def de declining crude oil reserves, local crude oil reserves. So it doesn't increase refining capacity of the refineries. It makes up for that loss. And so those, re those refineries are all held uh, where they are in refining by permits to the AQMD. And so it does not increase the refining, but allows an additional uh, location where crude can come in. And absent this location, then there may be other avenues to get in predominantly that it would be a lot of smaller ships uh, calling at desperate locations with around the ports in other areas. So basically, so, this is a new receiving area yes. for big ships to bring the same amount Correct. into the port of Los right. Angeles as opposed to having uh, four or five right. interior. That's, that's correct. Okay. Right now, there is one other uh, large crude uh, facility in the port of Long Beach, and so this would provide a redundancy to that. But otherwise, what's happening now is a lot of the very large crude carriers offshore unload way out to sea and put that, that crude oil on smaller ships, which then comes into the port. And so when you hear about the no project, what would happen without the project, people wonder, well, why is the no project not better environmentally? It's because you have actually additional emissions from those ships. In addition, those ships, when they come in, a lot of those terminals are even closer to the community. And so keep in mind that the planning process here was to put a crude facility out away from the community as far as possible. And so that's kind of the planning process that we went through. Uh, this was way back with the 2020 plan and building Pier 400. Uh, there were three different alternatives we looked at. We looked at the proposed project. We look, looked at one that kind of was a reduced capacity project and then the no project. What would happen if we did nothing? Um, and so those are the three alternatives we had identified in the document. Um, if you turn to the next page, it identifies the impacts. Um, you can see the different areas that we looked at, all these different uh, technical areas, cultural resources, g all these things were looked at. And so you can see that some were not significant. For instance, aesthetics and cultural resources, some could be mitigated below significance. And then some had what we call insignificant, uh, unavoidable significant impacts. And those means that if you applied mitigation, you still can't get below these thresholds that we establish. Um, so a, ca a case, an example is air quality uh, for NOx emissions, say, which, and it, which just has a very low threshold that on construction projects and operations, it's, it's v almost virtually impossible to get through those thresholds, even applying all the mitigation. So the, the emissions right will increase during uh, construction? Yes. But keep in mind that that's the case, but um, for the operations, mm -hmm. uh, the emissions would not necessarily increase more than if you did the no project. Did no project. Right. So that's always the balance you have to look at at the end of the day. Um, we you say it in the future if this is done, the environmental challenge will be below what it is if nothing happens. Correct. Uh, Correct. This provides opportunity. Like any new terminal, it provides opportunity to implement new environmental initiatives. So it, it provides you the opportunity to put AMP at the terminal. It provides opportunity to require use of low sulfur fuel in the ships and things like that. And if you look at the next slide down, 
relates to this. We, there's 74 construction operation measures applied to this project. Um, I have a complete list here if you'd like to see it. Uh, it's, it's very significant, these mitigation measures. In fact, I'm sure there's no crude oil terminal in the world that even starts to get at this. This is really very significant mitigation you're applying. And so, for instance, Janice, on here, you know, support construction guidelines, which you were helped us implement. Uh, those are, are going to be applied to all the construction, whether it's done by us or planes. Uh, and you can see vessel speed reduction is what we require the ships to slow down. Low sulfur fuel in the ships, and they're doing something really uh, interesting with the low sulfur fuel because these are um, these ships may be called this terminal maybe over once a year, for instance. So what they're going to do, and a lot of them only have one alter, alter, uh, auxiliary tank, and so they're actually going to do a fuel switch at sea at 0.5% low sulfur fuel, and that it's really much higher they're using now. Once they get into berth, they're going to they're going to put really low sulfur fuel in those tanks. When they go out, they're going to be at 0.2. So they do that 100% initially, and then as the years go on, they're going to start requiring them to have 0.2 coming in as well. And so it's a really uh, kind of an unusual, first of its kind uh, way of of getting at the low sulfur fuel, and then requiring amp at the facility as well. So these ships will be amped. Yes, they will. Now, that's a difficulty because... All of, all of them that call, even uh, the ones that call once every... No, that's a difficulty. We have, there's a progression of how they come in there. And so we actually get to only about 80%. Well, 80, that's fairly art in year seven. So, and then also there's an alternative for alternative, there's an option for alternative technology. And so... Like the uh, bonnet. Uh, like the bonnet. You've, you're aware of the, uh, the, the, what they call it, the sock on the stack. Uh, right. Plains is, is looking at that. Uh, very seriously and the, the benefit to that there's some feasibility issues with because these ships it's been plied someplace else but these ships have a huge volume very high stacks huge volume coming out maybe 10 times larger than units built before but the good thing about it is it captures not only the auxiliary engines but also the boilers and the boilers are used to pump what they use to pump uh, fuel right over the side of the ship when and what's the main time. reason they, they the ships won't be amped it has to do with uh, the ships only come maybe once in their lifetime, for instance, and so it becomes very difficult for them to put that uh, equipment on a ship. Uh, the Port of Long Beach just had an experience with the ARCO. They, they are actually uh, um, have a amp facility for some of their ARCO ships that call there. Uh, that's the only place they call. And for two or three of their ships, the cost was like $20 million. So it becomes a very expensive issue. So there's a control issue. Uh, planes is not only ships. Uh, they're an intermediary. And so it's uh, going to be a very gradual thing, and that's why we put the AMP requirements on there. Uh, in talking, uh, we believe that eventually there will be what we call a California uh, fleet developed. This is going to take some years for it. So after they learn what these requirements are, that people that want to do business here eventually will get those changes made to those ships. On the alternative technology, the bonnet or the right. sock, mm -hmm. uh, what what commitment would, does that take from the they have to from the uh, calling ship? Planes has to come to us with their feasibility determination on that. What does that so mean? They have to come to us, present. Uh, if it can't, if it's not determined not feasible, they have to come and present that to us, which they have not done at this point. So it is yet. feasible. Um, they have to show. What commit? They, I mean, I, I, what right. commitment? Just for those who may not the, understand the it, is from the, both sides for to put that minimum, on, or is it just from? The minimum commitment is the amp uh, requirement. Right. I know. Okay. I'm talking about the ones that can't do that. That can't do that, then they would not be amped. Right, so. I know. So I'm trying to find out what um, what would it take uh, on, from both sides to uh, th for with for the bonnet. It, uh, for who for would planes, have to? It would take flane, planes to come in and commit to it okay. at this point in time. They okay. have not committed to that technology yet. So that would because it has some feasibility issues for their application. Okay, right. Chris, no. did you want to add to that? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, if you if you turn to the next page, um, you can see uh, a comparison. We talked a little bit earlier. This is where we said that we will exceed some of these thresholds. So if you look at the top page with the little blue graphs mm -hmm. on it, but what this does is look at the different alternatives. So the bar on the left is the proposed project. The one in the middle is the no project alternative, and the one on the right is the reduced project alternative. And so in each case, uh, the proposed project, except for the SOX emissions, is actually low, lower than these other alternatives. So amongst the alternatives we looked at, it's really a better choice. 
Um, and down below is a very interesting chart, the colored one. This gets at the uh, health risk. We look at a whole bunch of different types of health-related issues, uh, long-term uh, cancer risk, residential worker, uh, uh, sensitive receptors. We also look at chronic. This one here looks is a residential risk, and you can see the standard. We set a standard of 10 in a million, which is also the standard used by AQMD. And you can see the proposed project is lower than all those others. And this gets to that issue I talked about earlier where we have emissions and some of the no project that will actually be closer to the community with a lot of smaller ships calling. And that's what is predominantly causing these these emission changes. And and is this this is is this graph what in the first this is over the life of the, over the life of the project. This is actually uh, residential cancer risk is over a 70 year life span. So that looks at somebody actually breathing the air for 70 years, 24 hours a day um, constantly. So that is kind of the basis for a residential risk. So this is over, this risk is done over 70 years. The project life is, is 35, but the, this, the way you do the analysis. Right, this, so you have no analysis the of the first yeah. five years. Yeah. Uh, no, it wouldn't, uh, it probably wouldn't have very, it'd have very right. little risk right. at all. Because this, this accumulates the total risk over that 70 years. So if you picture a graph with a bar here and a graph going up, all that area underneath there is accumulated risk. And so it's after 70 years, so this is the maximum it would be. And right. In five years, it would be very low. It would be, if we just did the risk and, and curtailed it at five years, it would be very, very low. You probably would hardly show on the graph. Okay. Okay. Okay, and finally, in the board's approval, we talked a little bit about this on the next page. Uh, the board did make some considerations uh, when they approved this project. Uh, when you have significant effects, the board has to do, uh, in order to approve the project, has to have a basis for that. And the basis is uh, project benefits, if you would. Mm -hmm. And they call it overriding considerations. And so this lists those. And so you can see I've talked about some of these uh, reduction in criteria pollutants relative to no project, reduction in health risk relative to those others. Um, it, I talked earlier about reducing the loading of these, light, what they call lightering of ships offshore, which has increased spill potential, but also the emissions from those ships. Um, it actually provides a region share of, uh, it's gonna provide uh, uh, for the energy's refineries as the, as the decline of local crudes goes, goes away. Um, it provides a second deep berth. Uh, the Port of Long Beach had experience a number of years ago where actually they had had difficulty. There was a um, an accident, I believe, a plane uh, crashed and was in one of their channels, and so they actually were close to shutting down. Uh, they had to uh, sh hold off some ships coming into that terminal. It became very uh, very difficult. They were close to actually affecting the supplies. Um, it also creates a lot of jobs. Small plane, right? Huh? Was it a small yeah, plane? Small plane. Yeah. Do I do yeah. this now? Um, Creates uh, uh, jobs, obviously, and also tax revenues associated with those those plan. jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to give you an idea on the jobs sort of thing, on the jobs issue is that actually for construction it creates 732 construction jobs um, for for a 30 month period. So it's very important, um, and there will be 54 full time employees associated with the job long term. How many? 54 long-term, um, 732 uh, construction Jackson. jobs. And that's just the direct stuff. That's not even talking about the regional area, which would, would be well over 1,000 uh, indirect jobs during construction. And so and then there's tax revenues associated with those as well. Um, finally, the last uh, slide that I have here, just it just enumerates the 11. The, then the appeal was filed. Uh, by the communities for a safe environment. And uh, you can see there's 11 items, and those are summarized, and the responses right. are summarized. We might go through those okay. publicly. Um, okay, w at this point, um, do you have anything to add? I just wanted to add that uh, having heard the project overview, it would be appropriate to ask for opponents of the project, including the yes. appellant, Mr. Marquez. That's what I was If he's say. here to address the committee. Right. <clears throat> to my understanding, uh, your council office contacted him but uh, he, last week, but he did not respond, and I sent him an email uh, yesterday reminding him of this meeting. Well, uh, yeah, at, so at this point, it would be appropriate to have um, Coalition for a Safe Environment to present its appeal, um, or anybody representing the appellants. Is there anyone here that would like to present the appeal? 
Jesse's probably off fighting another fight. <laughs> um, so why don't then why don't we just briefly go through each point of the appeal, um, and you can summarize the the port's response. Um, in your in your packet, you should have received a letter uh, from our executive director, Dr. Nats, mm -hmm. and attached to it is is a couple things. Number one mm -hmm. is the executive okay. summary. Yes. And then attached right. to it is a more detailed response. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the executive summary. Okay. And I'm just going to hit each individual uh, okay, good. response. Okay. And then you can ask questions. Okay. The first one uh, talks about whether or not there's a state or national emergency or economic right. need to build it. You have um, and our response yeah. is that. Um, in fact, we believe there is a vital. Um, if you, I have. Uh, Give Tom an executive okay. summary. I have a bunch of different Thanks. copies. I have copies. I got one. Okay. Um, and in other words, they're saying there's really no need for this facility. Right. And I think through our record, we have shown exactly that there is that there are declining crude stocks and that that this, in fact, fills that need. I should say, too, it's really the purpose of the port is to provide for international commerce and to allow these types of import. So it's a part, it's a part of our, our trust, I believe, and also that there is a vital economic need to this. This would then support the continued operation of the refineries. Um, and that existing terminals really cannot accommodate this this throughput uh, in, a, in a sane manner. And um, also, we talked about lightering. Is another issue why um, why this is an important and vital need here. Um, the project would provide redundancy, and the redundancy deals with again we have one other deep uh, terminal at mm -hmm. the between in San Pedro Bay, and that's at the Port of Long Beach. And what about uh, there's no state or national emergency? No, th there is, but I'm not sure that is a uh, is a requirement. There's no legal requirement that a yes. project approved um, must occur as a response to a no, state that, or national exactly emergency. Right. Okay. Right. All right. I'm going to go to the next one. Okay. Um, the port did not consider an alternative building only a bulk uh, terminal without building new hazardous tanks. Uh, there, for some reason, there was an, un an understanding on, I think, Jesse's part that uh, at some time in the past that he had thought that there was an alternative where you did not have any tankage, that the ship would come in, it would unload, and it would be pumped directly to the refineries. That is not really a practical or feasible way for them to operate. They need to have those tanks there to provide the high volume unloading and then to pump it, to pump it all the way to the refineries would be very, very slow, and it also then does not let them respond to different customers. So in one tank, they may have a certain crude of a certain quality that they need to partition. And so those tanks actually provide a volume for storage, but also allows them to uh, compartmentalize uh, the, uh, the crude coming in. And okay. so those tanks are really essential. And in addition, you know, they have to get AQMD uh, permits for those tanks as well, which are very restrictive on the emissions that they can have. Uh, one other thing that we talk about that I haven't mentioned is that in addition to our CEQA analysis, which look at all the emissions, Plains has also purchased a large number of offsets because when they build uh, this facility, they're going to have to get permits from those tanks from AQMD, and so they also had to buy offsets. So that's above and beyond. So regionally, uh, they spent uh, well over $10 million, I know, in offsets for particulates. Okay. Um, the, the, the third item is that the port, uh, there, the no project alternatives was, was not a good one. That it, was a, um, it was an inadequate alternative. And, and the no project alternatives really looks at what would happen absent this project. And so in some cases, would there be other permits what would go there? So um, what we did was we looked at uh, go ahead. Uh, what we looked at, what would be, what would happen if the project was not approved, and so a reasonable thing is that that area could possibly use for container storage. Mm -hmm. So that was the alternative, and then we did look at, you know, those smaller ships going those other ter terminals. Right. And uh, by the way, one of the issues was, well, those ships going those other terminals, will they have certain requirements on them? And we did apply even control measures on those other terminals as well. So we did apply a certain level amp. Our Clean Air Action Plan requirements is actually what we applied. Um, item four, um, 
the port does not a uh, lease does not restrict uh, uh, Pacific LA Marine. Actually, the lease has not been completed yet. It will come to the board at a future time, and that once approved by the board would then come to council as well. Um, and that lease will reflect what is in the EIR. It will not allow them to pr to bring in any other products than were assessed in the EIR. So it would not include LNG or LPG or any of those. Uh, so we have another products. opportunity to look at the lease yes. once it comes to us. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, item five: uh, the pub. Uh, Public requests that all uh, port relocate all hazardous and toxic facilities to Pier 400. This was the uh, Pier 400. There's a relocation plan at one time. The terminals that were slotted to go out there under our risk management plan have either uh, no longer exist or have changed their uh, their products that they handle so that there's no longer a they do not constitute a hazard under our risk management plan. And then there's two Westways uh, and Yankovic fueling station, which we are taking care of at this point in time. Westways is being decommissioned. And Yankovic, uh, the fueling station, is being slotted to move across the channel. And so really the issue of relocation of hazard facilities at that location is not germane to this. The Pier 400 project was part of that that liquid bulk terminal out there, if you look back in that deep draft document, the EIR for that fill, it actually says uh, crude oil. And that's why that channel was built to that depth. Um, item six, um, this gets at the fact that we do have significant findings in these different technical areas, and yet, uh, then so why didn't why wasn't there additional mitigation? What we did is we looked at each technical area and the statements of findings and fact that were done associated with this. We looked at all the mitigation measures and made a determination that that there are no other feasible mitigation measures that can particularly be added to this project. And so left with that, the port then is slotted with either approving or not approving the project. What they elected to do is approve it and do overriding considerations. And so I talked about the uh, 74 measures. It says 60 here. It's actually were 74 measures mm -hmm. uh, that were added uh, to the project to improve the environmental uh, effects or reduce environmental effects. And that the board really did, there was a very lengthy, it was a four over four hour uh, hearing that we had on this project uh, at the final hearing. And so they were very well versed in the significant effects and were well aware of, of their decisions that they were making. Um, also on number well, that's seven. That's kind of really the crux of. Pardon? That's really the crux of. Uh, CEQA. Yeah. Right. That's why we do EIRs. Absent right. that, then you'd so be doing a So at that point, the, the, the commission else. decided. Correct. Uh, they, they weighed both sides right. and, and uh, still went ahead and decided to Correct. Uh, uh, approve this project. Correct. And it was a unanimous decision. And I think some of the things that were really uh, key in their minds were the, uh, the lightering issue and the smaller ships and some of the, the air emissions changing. If we don't do this, we'll have uh, additional emissions. So um, there's a very specific record on that. Okay. Um, uh, the conclusion that uh, uh, specific economic, legal, and social uh, considerations make infeasible. This gets to the overriding consideration right. issues, and so it's kind of a repeat of what I talked right. about in my presentation. Right. And so you can see the reasons why the board decided to approve the project. and includes uh, uh, the environmental uh, facts, and that was their key consideration, but also the jobs. Uh, construction jobs, operating jobs, the purpose of the project to bring crude in. Okay. Um, item eight, the benefits of project outweigh and significantly unavoidable environmental and public health impacts of the project. Um, uh, the port did not consider or conduct a study to evaluate other economic development opportunities. Um, actually, uh, the project won't result in increased public health impacts. And if I remember that graph I yes. showed you, it's actually below the standard. It won't increase those. And as you may also recall, is that the board has entered into, through the TRAPAC agreement, the uh, Community Mitigation Trust Fund, this project will actually gener generate about $5 million that then put into that trust fund that can go to things like putting on uh, uh, double pane windows in schools and, and special filters and filtration systems on schools. And that's a very good point. And that, that was really at the, right. at the crux of the TRAPAC right. settlement. That, right. that was exactly it. Right. That, uh, every project that's approved, every growth, we hope we hope right. there is growth <laughs> still right. happening. Uh, it actually goes back to benefit the, the surrounding communities. Correct. That was and the so, beauty so of that. So for each of our projects that come forward, we'll have that same requirement in them. Right. So, okay. um, but, and, but you know, just on the on on the the side of uh, the appellants, that's also at the 
at the crux of what has has historically been, uh, you know, opposition. It, right. It's the economic benefits that were have always been touted uh, from this economic engine right. uh, for, you know, right. for a lot of years was was not able to to justify uh, the health risks and uh, you know the uh, the the cost. Right. Uh, uh, of health uh, problems yeah. to the population. I like to think of it. It takes off or it takes up where sequel leaves off. Uh, the cumulative it gets that all that that uh, uh, cumulative effects that have been there uh, that are below that significance line. And so I, I think it's really a valuable tool. Right. Because yeah, and and we don't we don't like to as we go forward pit good jobs against right you know, people's uh, health. That's right. And uh, hopefully we don't have to have that argument. Right. Technology exists yeah. right. that we can have both. We can have clean right. air and, and we I, can have good and jobs. And I think that combined with our Clean Air Action Plan and other port initiatives is really getting that, really eroding the uh, that kind of historic effect. Okay. Um, uh, also uh, ignored concerns recommendations of the US EPA to conduct a, a health impact assessment and what the heck is that and it's called an HIA and what it is it's a, uh, a generalized study of health effects that are based on all types of things that might uh, accrue to health for instance it might be lighting and noise and air quality taken into context of where a person lives uh, uh, and uh, what their jobs are and and other industry and things around them. It's a very large study and actually right now there have been a number of workshops on it in the area and we're actually in discussions with uh, US EPA already. They agree that it's not really appropriate for a project to do that. And so this, they're... Uh, the number nine says that you ignored the recommendations of the no. U.S. EPA. Yeah, we did not ignore them. To we've actually been, this. We've been we've been in conversation with them, and they have since corresponded with us, saying that they don't think it's the best a uh, use of that HIA to do it for a project. But what they would like to do is work with us, and they're thinking about us meeting actually with the appellant group and seeing if that might be a good forum to look at. Do you have that uh, rec that that? That letter we can yeah. provide that uh, they actually uh, did respond to us and that we've been in conversation. I'd with like them. to. I'd like to see yeah. that. You have to understand that even absent that, we have done a really. We have done a, a little bit of. We've done a whole bunch of studies that are actually the ones required. Uh, the health risk assessment is part of that. We do that mm -hmm. health risk assessment based working with state agencies and AQMD and everybody else. So you can see that list there of the things that we did to try to get at the same mm -hmm. things that Jesse is talking mm -hmm. about here. So we did a morbidity mortality analysis. Mm -hmm. We do an EJ analysis in our documents, which aren't really required by EIR. And we actually agreed with the PCAC many years ago that that was something we would include in our EIRs, mm -hmm. the socioeconomic a impact and mm -hmm. all the same thing. Okay. And so we tried to include all these other things which kind of make up an HIA of sorts, if you would. Okay. But then in addition, we're going to be working with okay. EPA on that. But I would like to see okay. your, your, your correspondence okay. with them on that. Okay. Okay. Ten. Okay. Ten. Uh, the, the project will cause, will cause um, more emissions, actually, from the refineries. And this gets back to the issue, is that absolutely not. This project brings in crude oil that will actually shore up the diminishing supply of crude. Those, those refineries uh, exist under a very strict permit with AQMD. And so if they wanted to increase the refining capacity, they have to go and get their permit modified. And so that would then actually increase refining. And so uh, this project does not result in that. And if there was an increase, they would be also required to do their own mitigation to reduce emissions. So this is uh, not correct. There is no uh, in, uh, increase in emissions as a result of this project occurring at those refineries. What about it'll cause Los Angeles and California to be more dependent on foreign oil? Uh, that that is a uh, an issue also addressed by our board, and I think everybody believes we uh, we looked at the plans, and we believe that there are plans for changing that. But the time frame involved in that will still require these uh, crude oil imports during that time when we switch to those types of alternative fuels. In other words, if you turned off the spigot right now. Uh, it would cause uh, very much harm to our economy. Yes. You you had a facility there that like uh, trains came from Utah, like mm -hmm. the Coke. Was that yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Now that was cold. a vision. Cold. Okay. Right. You thought that was going to be something for a while, but that kind of went away pretty quick, Correct. right? Yeah. So you what you're saying with this facility that you're trying to propose at this time would last longer than something like that? Could technology change or the price or what? 
what well, caused the demise of that? Well, that particular facility, it wasn't really a change in technology. It was competing markets for coal that occurred in other countries. So in mm -hmm. other words, the markets that that coal is going to be um, sold to got their coal from other sources. Predominantly that was Australia. rather quick. Yeah, uh, change. Yeah, it it uh, happened to you know that Australia uh, developed some of their uh, coal resources and was What's competing. What's the well, harbor's plan under, for that area right pardon? there? What's the harbor's plan for that? Well, part of this project is going to be located on in that area. On okay, that, in that area. Back to the chairwoman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. But also, uh, maybe you can speak to, uh, just on that issue, just for the port itself, mm -hmm. what are you doing uh, to um, encourage the use of alternative uh, fuels? Well, just that, yeah. There's somebody here in the office that might want to, I mean, in the audience, I mean, I, I, you might know. Want to speak to that. Um, we're doing uh, a lot, of, a number of things. Actually, uh, I'm going to have them come. Uh, I'm going to have Commissioner Freeman and, and yeah. Geraldine you, come up after that, to, okay. after you, to make a comment. Okay. Um, that's really a uh, critical importance to us. You know, uh, we've agreed uh, we're going to be putting in 10 megawatts of solar power around the ports as uh, kind of our, con there won't be a flat surface probably that does not have a solar panel on it in the port over the next five years. Um, in addition, some of our other uh, things we're doing, AMP actually is a very, uh, is a really important, uh, for instance, greenhouse gas uh, reduction a methodology that uh, because of the efficiency of the power plants. Um, in addition, you know, we're looking at, uh, we've uh, put quite a bit of money into uh, electric trucks at the port. Um, and so we've actually put in excess of $20 million in development of electric trucks. Uh, we're trying to get stimulus money now and our own money actually to put on uh, electric vehicles around the port, including those little yard hostlers that go around the port. We're actually converting those to electric. The transtainers in the port that, uh, that uh, move the big cranes actually inside in the back of the port, actually those are going to be transformed into electric. So we're doing a whole bunch of... Right. And I think I'm um, not going to be happy right. until at the airport and the port yeah. during in the construction yeah. phase, right. uh, we actually, you know, that there there is developed at some point a heavy right. construction equipment that is uh, low emissions or zero. It seems to me if we've developed the electric truck, that's the next uh, phase right. is right. is getting heavy construction equipment that actually uh, zero emission or, or or no or very low emissions. Yeah. Commissioner Freeman continues to ask me, is isn't that wharf uh, carbon free yet? So that's his, yeah. Uh, because unfortunately, everything we do, and we and we're we're going to see more construction projects. It's unfortunate that during that construction time, right, uh, we always have to right. accept higher emissions. Right. And a lot of other things we're doing. You know, we have a, a lead requirement on all of our buildings, and uh, so all our waterfront developments are also going to be very green. And uh, so we're really working kind of at all angles. Okay. So. Let's uh, go to the last final point eleven. Or is that what you kind of just talked about? Um, yeah, it's, that's very similar. It's uh, the response is uh, we did include a lot of greenhouse gas measures uh, with the project. AMP is one of them. Um, LEED certified buildings. Uh, we're doing the solar panel project, uh, which is kind of a port wide thing. Actually, we do buy 25% uh, green power at the port as well from DWP. Okay. Any questions on the 11 points of the appeal? Now I'm looking forward to David and Geraldine. Okay. Um, I, at this point, I would like to have Commissioner Freeman and um, Dr. Nats come up. Do you guys, you know, stick by in case we... Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I guess basically uh, for uh, both of you, I mean, you can, you can make some comments, but I think for us here as we're sitting... Uh, in in this position, we, you know, we need to know if you believe that the commission acted appropriately based on the evidence in the EIR. You know that the benefits of this project and the mitigations, you know, outweigh the potential harms. I mean, that's kind of really what we've got to decide here. Well, my initial reaction to this project was not positive because uh, uh, I believe that. The biggest issue facing name this. For the record, David. Uh, uh, my name's Dave Freeman, and I'm the president of the Harbor Commission. Uh, my initial reaction to this project was not positive because uh, our biggest problem, one of the biggest problems we have, and our new president has identified it, is our dependence on imported oil. 
Uh, but as I learned about the project, I, I realized uh, that the way to cut back on imported oil is to move to alternative fuels in our transportation system, uh, that turning down this project was not going to stop the oil from coming in. It would just come in in a lot of smaller ships that would have spills, and our waterways, our water would be more polluted than it would be uh, if we went ahead with this project. So that basically, um, it's just like many other problems we have. It's the demand uh, for the oil that's bringing it in, and the means by which it comes comes in is incidental. So that uh, it so that I realized that this was an environmental protection measure in the sense that it will give us a a safer path for the oil to come in than what would otherwise be be the case and then we threw the book at these people quite frankly and i think that they've agreed to more mitigation uh, than anyone in in the in the history of the port uh, I, I i think that that's true they they've agreed to just everything in our clean air action plan and have worked with us and i want to amplify one of the answers they are obligate on, on this amping they are obligated to look at this bonnet system and come in with a feasibility report. It's not a question. How are they? How are they obligated? Well, is that going to be? I mean, what what, what are you? They are required, as I understand it, in, as part of the EIR, to do this feasibility study on the bonnet and bring it to to us. To yeah, is it. that part of the lease agreement? Is that a side letter? What what is? What, are, you, are you addressing uh, mitigation measures in general? No, I'm. I'm. A, I'm, a, I'm a, a, this yeah. the bonnet. They. They right now they're required to do their amp requirement, and they. Right, I know. We're going to the ones that the twenty percent. Right. right. Okay. They're the commitment right now. The lease is not completed yet, but the commitment right now is for them to come forward with a feasibility study showing us. Well, how, how? 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 How is that? It how are be, they obligated? It will be in the lease. I mean, I, the, are you yeah, giving I, them a few years to do that? A couple months? Uh, they, they're right now looking at the feasibility of applying that technology. Looking at, this, at the feasibility. At you see what I'm right. getting at. No, yes, well, I, but I, 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 think I can assure you, uh, as the president of the board, that when we review the lease, it will have a deadline okay. and an obligation to come in with a feasibility study by a certain date. Now, in our technology programs, we may agree to uh, help finance the thing because we do first of a kind help so uh but we're going to work with these folks and okay. it's going to happen the, but uh, i understand your question we, yeah. we just can't leave it to the uh right uh, good graces of, exactly. uh, of all american <laughs> exactly uh, and we 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 want and we haven't in terms of the mitigation measures so uh the other point that i want to make is they are financing this sucker it's very important that we... Is that the technical term, what they call the valve that <laughs> yeah. comes in? Well, you know, it's a big ship. and uh, I used to be in the Merchant Marine, and uh, we talked that way. But, I mean, I was on a 10,000-ton ton tanker. These, these things are mammoth. But, uh, but the point about it is that they are financing. We, we're only paying for the relatively small improvement in our dock, but the main thrust of this project is coming from what I call OPM, other people's money. And that's very important to uh, uh, Councilwoman Hahn and the rest of us so that we can use the money we have for improving the waterways, uh, the waterfront, and, and other things uh, where we have to spend the money. So in terms of creating jobs, this is a real winner because it's a large number of jobs. and. It's primarily going to be financed uh, by, by the uh, the company that that has the application. Okay, um, Councilwoman, I could just clarify the language um, regarding the sock on the the stack. Basically, they're required to um, evaluate the technology and implement such tech, such technology um, within five years if found to be feasible. So that's the language that was written in the EIR, and basically within five years, right. 
Right, and that language will carry over into the lease. Is there, a, is there a third party that would look at whether or not it's feasible besides just them? Well, generally, we have to we work with a, a technical group with the Air Resources Board and the Air Quality Management District because they have to sign off on the emissions reductions. Right. So uh, part of determining feasibility is that the agencies accept it as a bona fide emission reduction measure. Okay, so that's part of what the feasibility is? Right. Will there be, um, I mean, are you, are, are you going to be a part of that study, their, their feasibility study, or do we just get a report at the end of four and a half years, it's not feasible? Actually, we're, um, I talk to uh, the company does that quite often right now, and so we kinda, I kind of know the status. You know, they have uh, brought them on to, to start to look at the engineering of it. So I kind of know what's going on, and that it, I don't see this being four years. I see this happening uh, sooner rather than later happening uh, like that, happening or I mean getting it, it's not going to be getting the answer uh, I, well, I guess you can ask the applicant but uh, from my understanding is that they're working on it right now and okay. in fact we would be looking at that and and okay. putting our own review into it as well as a technical advisor okay company. all right I, I want to add one oh, I was gonna have Dr. Nats because we got to Okay. The one other thing I want to say is that we do do a mitigation monitoring. So all the mitigation measures, they have to... Who monitors it? Uh, they, they, uh, we monitor directly ourselves in some cases. In other things, they have reports. They have to do this that then we review. And so they'll be doing that through the lease on a six-month or uh, annual basis. And then those become actually part of our record and public record as well so people can see um, that they're actually doing the measures. Okay. Dr. Nance. I'd just like to make one um, final comment. Um, the refineries in the area, because the question was raised about their capacity, um, basically the refineries supply all of Nevada, all of Southern California, and about 60% of the gasoline for Arizona. Right now, 60% of the crude oil that goes to the refineries is from sources in California and Alaska that is on a decline. So um, I think that speaks to the need of the project. The other thing that's very important um, and Ralph mentioned the the plane accident situation we have in this um, LA area about crude oil for 10 days supply and so um, if the facility in Long Beach you know there's no access to it you know after several days the refiners are in the position of having to shut down and we were almost brought you know the whole Southern California Nevada and Arizona to a standstill you know if we couldn't get that oil in so that's why it's critically important to have this two facilities that can can supply those refiners can you give me uh, if if we decide to um, concur with the board on this and dispense with the appeal uh, how long where where is the lease when when could we see the lease the, the, when will it come to the council? Right. We're in negotiations on the lease right now. I'd have to check with <laughs> staff on the exact timing of when it may come to you. Um, they can't start construction until we have the lease done, so there's a big impetus to, you know, conclude it very quickly. But we needed to get through the environmental process in order to actually finalize the lease. Um, it, it's a matter, say, a matter of months, yeah, I would right. say. Is it months? Right. Yeah. I would say a couple months. A couple most. months? Yeah. June? June okay all right thank you very much uh, what, what I want to do now is have uh, the public comment and then we uh, as, as this committee are, are going to have to decide whether or not we believe the Commission acted appropriately based on all the evidence that we were looking at this morning right okay uh, there's one against uh, I'm there's against there's four and then there's general they didn't say whether they're for or against so I'm gonna call up uh, dr. Clyde Williams first uh, dr. Clyde Williams four one one five yeah Wood. we're gonna give you a minute a piece <laughs> El Sereno uh, representing the Los Angeles Audubon uh, Conservation Committee uh, basically we're for the appeal against the motion or recommendation to uh, continue the project uh, background I did part of the original Midland Odessa pipeline project from basically the same area to the mid-continent 
One of the elements in this is project description. Once the oil gets in the pipeline, there's no way to control it. It's just like the stimulus package. Put the money into the bank and it goes someplace. We don't know where. So this could be the first element of going to the central United States, Texas. There are pipeline routes. There are things to be done through there. Uh, also, where is the oil going to come from? Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to have uh, Camilla Townsend, Dan Hoffman, and Elizabeth Warren as the next three. Why don't you all three come on up, and then I'll call three more. Good morning. I'll make this very brief. Uh, the San Pedro Chamber of Commerce continues to support the Plains All-American Marine Crude Oil Terminal on Pier 400. Um, the EIR for this project, we feel, which has already been approved by the Board of Harbor Commissioners, we really believe that it was appropriately approved and analyzed. And we feel that this project now, more than ever, must move forward. So we're going to ask you that you deny this appeal. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dan Hoffman, the Executive Director for the Wilmington Chamber of Commerce. The Wilmington Chamber supports this project. It creates thousands of good paying jobs uh, and tax revenues, which we all know we need. After construction phase, the air quality will really improve. Um, this project provides a new level of safety and security that's important to our communities and to our port. The project has been thoroughly vetted throughout the community, which I know Dr. Appy mentioned the meetings, but I've been to many where Plains has made those presentations. As a matter of fact, I hope we get through this so I don't have to go to any more meetings on the project. <laughs> um, the Plains was the recipient of the, our company year award for 2008, um, recognizing the thorough job that they've done vetting this project throughout the community and also recognizing their contributions to some 40 nonprofits, including uh, those that help children, uh, of course, businesses, but also education. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of Future Ports and our members, we're pleased to support. Name, please. Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Elizabeth Warren, Executive Director of Future Ports. Uh, we are uh, pleased to support this project. Councilman, I think you said it best when you said we should not be pitting up good jobs against uh, the environment. So um, the Plains has gone above and beyond spending millions of dollars uh, that they didn't need to, um, but they did anyway. Uh, and uh, we, we commend their efforts on that. So uh, environmental, good jobs, uh, the economy, and uh, the need for uh, the, the facility. So we support the project. Thank you very much. Uh, Jody Muller, uh, Joel uh, Thurwachter, and Aaron Green. State your name for the record and then start talking. Good morning. Jody Muller with Western States Petroleum Association. Um, we urge you to uh, deny this appeal and move forward for the following reasons. Most specifically, we have an urgent need to upgrade the energy infrastructure in the state of California, and this project would do that. Um, and also, we uh, feel that this project will really help us meet the future energy demand in California. Um, and it provides our local refining facilities with the much needed materials that they need to conduct their business and provide fuels to our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Aaron Green, Legislative Affairs Manager with VICA. Um, VICA has reviewed this project for the last couple of years. We've put it through our entire committee process and we're really a strong supporter of this project and it's one of regional significance. Um, You've heard about the environmental benefits, and we're talking about the infusion of $575 million to $600 million into our economy. Um, and this is something that we are really in need of right now. Um, without going into specifics, uh, I would really urge you to deny this appeal um, and help make Pier 400 a reality. So just please deny this appeal. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Joel Thurwachter. I'm with the Operating Engineers, Local 12. I represent operating engineers that uh, live and work in the harbor and the surrounding areas. Not only will Pier 400 Berth 408 project meet the Coast Guard Homeland Security requirements, it will also create 6,300 construction jobs during construction and 230 permanent full-time jobs when completed. 
it has also been agreed upon to be done under a PLA, which requires a percentage of the workers to be local, so they won't be coming in from out of state. Uh, this will help the state and local economies. It also, according to the EIR, uh, will actually improve the air quality in the harbor and the Los Angeles Basin. So this is a win-win. It creates much jobs, meets security, and helps clean the airs not only for the members working there, but for everyone living in LA and the basin. Uh, International Union of Operating Engineers is in full support of the project, and we urge you to dispense with the appeal. Thank you Thanks. very much. John Schaefer, uh, Dave Wright, Veronica Becker. Hey, John. Former commissioner, I think yeah. I recognize there, huh? And a pile driver. Yeah, exactly. You support it? Oh, we support the project. All yeah. right, good, good. Go to the next speaker. <laughs> no, no, Go to the next speaker. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. no I'm going to get out of that one quickly. No, again, uh, I'm John Schaefer. I'm from the Pile Drivers Local 2375. We're based in Wilmington, have been for San Peter, Wilmington for over 100 years. I'm a third generation pile driver. Uh, we've been building the ports and a lot of infrastructure projects for you know at least 100 years uh, basically it's very important to you guys understand is that what we do is the infrastructure projects we build these types of things and while you were saying we don't want to pit the environment against the job the jobs we've been getting our behinds kicked for a long time when it comes to the port work uh, we want to get these things going forward we are the ones who can build the light rails we're going to build the solar panels we're going to put all these things that everyone's been designing for many, 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 many years to actual fruition. So we'll build the amps and so forth, and we want this things to go forward. If the, the international, Obama, uh, Schwarzenegger, everybody's been saying we want to stimulate the economy through infrastructure jobs. This is we it. We want this thing to go forward. Okay. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Veronica. Good morning, Council Members. Veronica Perez Becker with the Central City Association. We are so pleased to be here today to support this great project, which will be a great source of uh, economic stimulus for Southern California and the whole region, especially during these times of economic crisis. We need the jobs and the uh, $575 million that it will put into our, our economy. In addition, it meets very stringent environmental mitigations, including the objectives of the Clean Air Action Plan. And we believe that the Pier 400 Birth 408 project is the right way to efficiently manage anticipated growth while mitigating the impacts related to growth, and we hope that you will deny the appeal and approve the project. Thank you. Thank you. David. Good morning. I'm David Wright, uh, a Vice President with Plains All-American, the project proponent. Um, I want to thank Dr. Appy. I think he did a, a great job of covering lots of the, the points. Uh, I think the port did a very good job of analyzing the appeal that was uh, applied for. Um, of course, we're wanting to get the project moving forward, but I'm, I'm just, uh, rather than go through my written marks, I think everything was covered. Um, I, would like, I would like you to speak to maybe your commitment to this idea of the feasibility of the, the bonnet or the sock. Um, actually, we've been following that technology for quite a while. I've personally been following it for over two years. I went up to Roseville when they tested it on the locomotives. I was in Long Beach when they tested it on ships. Um, the issue is that it has to be scaled up very significantly for the size of ships that we're dealing with. Um, but what 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 you can, what, what can you done, tell us is your what is your what is well, going to be we've, your commitment? We've we've already spent one hundred and fifty thousand dollars having the engineering done on the process. Uh, there's a bunch of studies that have been done in terms of how it could operate. Uh, there's a lot of issues that have to be worked out. Right. Um, you know when you start working. Uh, large facilities like this around tankers there's issues from a maritime standpoint there's safety issues there's lots of things that have to be right. worked through right uh, the technology we believe is very effective uh, just how, how how applicable it's going to be how well it'll work with the customers that we have right how it's going to be accepted by the maritime community those are the issues that have to be researched and those are the items we're working on already but if all things being equal well, we've, what's, we've what's, already uh, met all What's your commitment? Our, our commitment is we're, we're spending money looking at it. I mean, if it's feasible and it makes sense, uh, from a tactical and an economic standpoint, it's something we want to pursue. But you're looking at tomorrow's ideas for today's solutions. That's what I want to hear you say. 
And that we're like I said, I've been following it for two years. I know. We've committed one hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars to have engineering done. I mean, right, we're, but I'm not it's just the money. But we want to hear. I think that as a corporation, you're committed. Whatever the ideas are, however you could do this here, this commission is dedicated and focused. This councilwoman has been the leader. I think of Tom Bradley, and then I think of Janice Hahn. The only two people, and God bless Rudy and Joan Flores and everybody in between, who's been a fighter for the port in a way. And so, with that being said, look at it tomorrow. Someone may come up with an idea tomorrow to solve whatever the challenges are, we want them implemented today. And that's the kind of commitment that makes sense and to me. That's the language Thank you. as part of the mitigations that are Beautiful. built in that will be part of our lease agreement. Okay. So, Thank you. Right. And we'll want, to, we'll want to see that language in the lease agreement. I want you to quote. I want that. I want Tom Bonge's uh, in the lease agreement. That was, <laughs> that was beautiful, especially the Tom Bradley, Janice Hahn thing. Okay. Alex Pugh. Uh, Tommy... Favney? Oh, oh, yeah. And Joe Gatlin. Hi, good morning. My name is Alex Pugh here on behalf of the Los Angeles Chamber of Com uh, Commerce. I will keep my comments very short. We um, supported this project at the EIR hearing. We have supported um, Plains' project for, for quite a while. Um, there are obviously a lot of good um, environmental reasons to do this project. There are even better economic reasons to do this project. And this is an opportunity to bring in uh, a company and really have them establish a footprint here in Los Angeles. So this was a no-brainer for us on, on a number of accounts. Um, I'm here today to urge you to deny this appeal. Thank you. Joe? Good morning, uh, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Lodge. Rosenthal. I, I, I really appreciate the time. Uh, I've been a city activist in San Pedro, born and raised there. I'm a community leader. Been on two neighborhood councils, president of one, PCAC steering committee, PCAC for over five years. I've never seen, and I've been to just hundreds and hundreds of different um, meetings on different things, and never seen anything more better vetted. Uh, he's been transparent. He's been good to the community. This is a, a program that will not only be good for our environment, good for jobs, um, I had the privilege of working for one of the lead environments in the world, and I, so that means a great deal to me. But I know this is good for our community, and I'm 100% behind this. Thank you, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Tommy Falvai. I'm with International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 11, in the greater Los Angeles area. Uh, Council Hahn and uh, Rosendahl and uh, Tom, I just wanted to um, thank you for giving me the opportunity today to speak. But on top of this, with a lot of our members out of work, we have close to a uh, thousand of our members that's on the books and waiting, you know, for these good construction jobs to come up and open up. And, um, you know, this All American Plains and the Pier 400 project will bring the, those good construction jobs. And we don't want to wait until June. Our members are fighting to go out there and create jobs. And that's what I do as an organizer to go out there and create these jobs for our members. So, you know, we ask, you know, um, the council to consider to move this project forward. And, uh, you know, all due respect to the Port of LA and their staff, they do a wonderful job when it comes to building green development. And, uh, um, you know, IBW Local 11, you know, we, we've been around for over 100 years when it comes to your electrical needs. You know, no offense with the carpenters, the, the power drivers are saying, they say, they, you know, they make uh, solar panels. We invented the will when it comes to solar. So, you know. All right, let's not have that debate in here. All right. So. Measure B loss. You won. <laughs> we're moving won. forward. We're moving forward. Go while you're ahead. You won. You won. That's the, you won. That's the number one yeah. thing. We want to move forward no matter what the outcome is. Okay. But thank you very much. All right. Uh, Priscilla Ching. Mr. Clerk, will you inform the clerk and, and council that as soon as we get yeah, this vote this will all be our run down? This will be our last public comment. Okay. Good morning. My name is Priscilla Chang from the Los Angeles County Federation of Labor. Uh, today, I'm representing Maria Elena Durazo, who cannot be here. On behalf of the 800,000 workers that we represent in LA County, we proudly, proudly support this project, and we hope and wish that you would uh, deny the appeal. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, yeah, great speech. We're going to read into the record uh, the rest of the public comment. Um, uh, 
Sandy Cahas, William White, Kenny Gibson, Chuck Tenen, uh, Joanne Valley, uh, Joe Serrato. Uh, and maybe when we, it goes to the full city council, if you'd like to, we're going to reopen public uh, comment at the full city council, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, you get heard that day. So at this point, um, city attorney, uh, we we need to either um, find that the board of harbor commissioners acted appropriately, or based on what we've heard and read today, uh, we think they did not act appropriately. Is that correct? Yes, and uh, obviously we would urge you to uh, recommend that the full city council hold a public hearing on this matter. Um, okay. Um, make the findings right. that are indicated in the uh, Harbor Commissioner's report to you that they acted appropriately and legally in certifying the EIR and approving the project based upon the evidence provided in the EIR which included mitigation measures that would avoid or substantially lessen the significant environmental impacts of the project, B, determinations that certain identified mitigation measures are infeasible for specific economic, legal, social, technological, or other reasons, and C, specific economic, legal, social, technological, and other benefits that support approval of the project. Not, <clears throat> notwithstanding any significant impacts that cannot be reduced or less than significant levels through mitigation. So moved. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, and deny the appeal. Yeah. Right. Okay. So thank you. Uh, <clears throat> yes. Okay. So it's been moved and uh, seconded that uh, we did find that the Board of Harbor Commissions acted appropriately and and uh, we're moving to uh, deny this appeal. And I will say, and I appreciate your comments, uh, Councilmember Labonge. Since I have been elected in 2001, it has been a challenge and an opportunity uh, to find a way uh, that we can uh, build projects, we can grow, we can keep fueling this economic engines, one of our largest economic engines in the region, uh, but a way that, that we, we can figure out uh, with the technology that exists today uh, how, how to mitigate uh, the negative impacts that historically th th this uh, operation has had, particularly on the residents of the surrounding community. Uh, I think this project does that. Uh, and I believe that uh, the Harbor Commission uh, did act appropriately. I will say the one area that I, I did sort of uh, have, uh, you know, sympathy with was the idea of, um, you know, is there is there a way in the lease language that we could be, a, you know, have have really strong language? I think we sort of heard it, didn't exactly come out the way I wanted to hear it from uh, Dave Wright, but. Uh, there, there has been, I, I think, history that, uh, you know, just looking at something or just, uh, you know, if it's feasible, we'll consider doing it. Uh, and I, and I think ships, we know now that ships create, uh, the, the, the majority of the pollution, uh, in our harbor area in Los Angeles. Uh, 20 percent of all the pollution in Los Angeles comes from ships. So if we could, uh, when that lease comes back to us, if there could be, uh, sort of that language, uh, that Tom alluded to, and I think you're, you're hearing from me that I haven't heard yet, that, that we can, uh, tell the community, tell the appellants that it's going to be more than just looking at it. You know, it, it really, uh, I'd like to see that extra 20% ships uh, not cause harm uh, when they come into birth. And if you could get that language in when the lease comes to us, uh, that, that would, uh, I think, really make me excited about this project. Um, anything else? No, I just okay. want to thank uh, Dave Freeman uh, for his work. Uh, Remember when they got rid of the incinerators in 1958, my dad said they'd let no one in from Tennessee anymore. And I'm lucky we didn't have that rule because we wouldn't see David here. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So uh, with that, we have unanimous uh, a, a denial of that appeal. Are we going to take the other? Okay, in the interest of time, uh, why don't we move approval of items one, two, three, and four, if that's okay. All right. Is that all that's left? Okay. And then I do have public comments on item uh, 
one and four, and then just general public comment. So Arnold Sachs, Arnold Sachs, He's Arnold split. Sachs. Is he still here? Nope. Okay. okay. Then uh, anybody else wishing to address this uh, esteemed committee? Seeing none, we're adjourned to the full city council. Uh, Mayor Hahn, uh, Bradley. <laughs> <laughs>